So there are quite a few arcade races already on Switch, right? Like there's Mario Kart 8, uh, Fast RMX if you're more of like an F-Zero boy, um, and then like stuff that's jumped over from mobile like uh, Riptide. Another game that's jumped from mobile is Gear Club, and on Switch it's Gear Club Unlimited. And if you're looking at like the app on the eShop, you might be inclined to think, oh, this, this kind of looks a little bit more realistic, maybe a little bit more gritty. It might lean more towards simulation. The moment you actually jump into Gear Club Unlimited though, you feel very, very quickly, this is not a simulation racer. It tries to stay more faithful to something like a Forza or a GT, but as soon as you have the opportunity to play Gear Club next to something like a GT Sport, uh, a Forza Motorsport, or even a Forza Horizon, it's very, very easy to kind of see that there have been compromises put in place by the developers to deal with the fact that it's running on limited hardware in comparison to make sure that the package as a whole doesn't feel like it's it's falling short. So the basic progression system in Gear Club Unlimited kind of hinges on championships, which is not particularly uncommon, but the implementation is kind of spotty. The, the world map that you have access to is actually huge, but you have this sort of like fog of war-ish style haze over most of the map. And so when you progress through championships, you have the opportunity to earn stars and the better you do, the more stars you earn. The more stars you earn, the more of the map you uncover. The weird thing about the map though is that it just seems kind of out of place. You'll have Bayside style vista areas next to random rally spots, next to like canyons and then like inner city areas and it doesn't feel anywhere near as cohesive as like a Forza Horizon game which you might argue is a bit of a, a bit of a comparison to make, perhaps an unfair one, but the reality is like Forza Horizon 1 came out in 2012 on 360 and that game visually and in terms of design and in terms of progression feels way way smoother in pretty much every aspect next to Gear Club Unlimited but that doesn't mean it doesn't have its merits either. In terms of customization coming from mobile as you'd expect there's quite a pretty decent level of customization, uh, whether it's sort of cosmetic in, in terms of like paint jobs or stuff you can attach to your car or more mechanical like actually stuff that affects gameplay, there's plenty of ways to customize your car but on top of that you also have access to a garage and this garage is a huge massive big shed uh, that you can just fill with random crap and this is where the kind of at odds with itself works, where it's wacky and it's dumb and it's stupid but really you don't care. You're there because you have access to way too many tools for someone who's just kind of been racing haphazardly through this world for like four seconds. But it, it feels really fun to actually jump into the garage, mess around with the car, kind of level it up more or less, jump into a race and then feel really, really OP. And while I'm kind of talking about the racing itself, probably should talk about like the difficulty and assists. In terms of how you control the car, it feels a little bit stiff, again compared to Forza Horizon 1. The reason why I keep kind of going back to Forza Horizon 1 is because it straddles the line really really well between a simulation and an arcade racer, where you have the flexibility to sort of toggle assists on and off at will, but it, it really feels responsive no matter what you do. The problem is, Gear Club Unlimited it straddles that line again, but not in a good way. You don't have access to assists that feel really substantial at all. You can turn off sort of assist braking and turning and you know, like it, it's a pretty basic slider in this case, but the reality is that it's like, if you're bad at races, put everything up to the max and it feels like the game's playing itself. Put it all the way to the bottom and it feels like the game shouldn't feel as clunky and a little bit gross to control as it does. The exception to this is Rally, where it just goes full arcade and it you don't really care at that point because you're drifting around corners, drifting around these mountaintops, and it feels good for the most part. But those Rally events are not quite as common as I would have liked, unfortunately. All in all, like, Gear Club Unlimited is a decent racer. It's not quite as polished as a Mario Kart 8 or a, a fast RMX, but it feels fun to play for the most part. The customization will keep people who are coming from like mobile games or potentially like more casual gamers at bay in terms of keeping busy and, and feeling like there is a sense of progression. But for more hardcore gamers, people that have had the opportunity to get really into arcade races or really into sim races, you're probably better off sticking with one side or the other.